Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Advanced Topics. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about Perf C2C. So Perf C2C, or Perf Cache to Cache, is this great tool that we can use to debug false sharing problems uh, in our applications. And the way that it helps us do this is by helping us figure out which cache lines are under, under the greatest amount of contention. So let's go ahead and open up our benchmark false sharing. And just as a reminder, false sharing is the case where we have uh, the unintentional sharing of data between threads on the same chip multiprocessor or across different chip multiprocessors. So what that really means is just, you know, data that we're using uh, for one or more threads gets mixed with unrelated data on the same cache line or on the same page. So we're mainly going to be focusing on uh, the cache line uh, false sharing in this case, but a lot of the ideas extend to pages as well. So in this benchmark here, our false sharing comes from the fact that these four atomic ints A through D that we pass to threads zero through three respectively will likely wind up adjacent to each other in memory and on the same cache line. So we don't have any direct sharing going on here. Each thread is working on a unique piece of memory. However, that memory will likely wind up on the exact same cache line. So in the read-only case where we're only reading these atomic ints, false sharing isn't really an issue. And the reason why is, you know, let's go ahead and say, for example, you know, threads zero through three all get mapped to different cores with their own private L1 data caches. Now, when each of these threads wants to read their respective atomic ints, A, B, C, and D, what will end up happening is they first have to load in the cache line that contains their respective atomic ints and then access the atomic int from that cache line. However, what this means is they're really just loading in a read-only copy of the cache line that contains all four uh, of these atomic ints into their L1 data caches. So we're just getting four copies of this cache line spread around on the, these different cores. So read-only, uh, the read-only case isn't a problem because you know each of these threads can read from this cache line without any issues. The problem comes when we want to start writing to this cache line. So cache coherence is at the cache line granularity. And with cache coherence, what that helps us enforce is serialization of writes to a memory location. And by memory location, we mean a cache line. We have a single cache coherence state for a cache line. And the reason why we want to do this serialization of writes is because we want to avoid cases where, you know, I write to a memory location and someone else reads an old value because they have a stale copy of that memory inside of their private caches. We also want to avoid, say, two threads writing to the same memory location at the same time and kind of getting out of sync. So in order to serialize writes to a memory location or to a cache line, we have to send out invalidations to you know, the other caches when we want to do a write. That way we can get exclusive access uh, to that cache line and put, it what's no and put that cache line in what's known as a modified state. Basically, you know, we have exclusive ownership of this cache line. So you can see that this can become a problem, right, when we have all four of our atomic ints that we want to write to on the same cache line. So even though logically these threads are working on independent pieces of data, because they're all on the same cache line, that cache line is constantly going to be invalidated and pulled between each of these threads that might be on different processor cores. So we've seen this before. Um, we've looked at the L1 data cache miss rate. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at that again with perfstat d and we will run our application so we can see kind of the side effects of this false sharing here by looking at the our l1 data cache miss rate so you know this miss rate is a good indication of say false sharing in this case because we're really only accessing four atomic integers so that shouldn't really cause any thrashing in our cache right our l1 data caches are often say 32k bytes so it's not say a capacity issue we're only asking accessing four elements so it's not going to be a conflict issue what it turns out to be is a coherence issue. So we have, you know, our cache lines constantly being invalidated and pulled between these different cores, leading to a way worse uh, hit rate than we'd expect. So in the case of our simple example here of false sharing, right, we can pretty easily debug, um, we can pretty easily debug it in this case because it's really just four atomic ints that are being accessed. But in reality, programs are very complex. They you know, our data accesses might be hidden behind, you know, layers of indirection and, you know, runtime con or control flow that's only known at runtime. So that's why we need tools in order to, you know, debug things like false sharing in much larger applications. So let's go ahead and use perf C2C to debug this false sharing uh, in this case. 
So in order to use perf C2C, all I need to do is perf C2C record and then run my application again. And then I can do perf C2C report. And it'll bring me up the shared data cache line table. So this will just be a table of your uh, cache lines that are under the greatest amount of contention. And contention is measured by the total number of hit M events. So a hit M is just a hit on a modified cache line. So this basically means that when one of these threads wanted to access a piece of memory and it went out you know, over the bus, it found that cache line in a modified state in another core. So this is a good indicator of you know, direct sharing or false sharing, right? Because this means that you know, when we wanted to access the data, in a lot of cases, we were finding that somebody else was already accessing and wanting to write to that data as well. So inside of the shared data cache line table, like I said, we get you know, a sorted uh, list of our, our cache lines that are under heavy contention. So in this case, we also get the virtual address, uh, the percent of hit M's that correspond, uh, hit M events that correspond to this particular cache line, and even a breakdown of whether they were local hit M's or remote hit M's. So a local hit M will just be on the same chip multiprocessor. A remote hit M will be, say, if we have a multiprocessor system. So it's actually on a different chip that, that cache line was found on. You have to remember, uh, cache coherence is a global property. It's not just, say, for a single processor. Okay. So we can get more information. So if I do question mark, it brings up a little help tab. You see I can display all cache line details so I can get even more information here. So I'll go ahead and select the cache line, press D. And now you can see we even get a breakdown of you know which thread, right? Experience the percentage of hit M's that each thread experienced. So 17, 25, 32, 24 respectively. And we can even see what part of the cache line these threads were accessing. So um, you know, thread zero was accessing, you know, offset 32. Uh, 20 hex, uh, thread one was accessing offset 24 hex, 28 uh, hex, and 20 C hex, or 2 C hex for thread three, respectively. So these will just be our atomic ints. So they really did wind up being adjacent to each other and on the same cache line. We can even see the code address that is causing these hit M's, um, and even the amount of cycles, right, that it took for these hit M events, or the average amount of cycles. So this is why we should care about these hit M events because you know instead of taking just a few cycles to access the L1 cache, these hit M events end up taking us you know on the order of say you know four to five K cycles. And if we scroll over to the right, we can even see some more information about the location of where these hit M's are coming from. So you can really see here that you know these atomic it, that you know from our you know our thread that we're running here with our lambdas. So we're using a lambda to launch these threads. Uh, so we have threads one, two, three, and four. And then you can see that the actual line of code, let's go ahead and shrink this back, that you know is causing these hit Ms is in atomic base.h on line 548. So what exactly is going on at line 548 of that uh, header file? Well, if we just go ahead and open it up, we can see that it's really just an atomic fetch and add. So this is just always in line. So this is just how uh, that atomic increment is actually implemented just with this simple atomic fetch and add. So uh, perf CTC is this great tool that we can use to debug uh, false sharing without having to just manually inspect our code. Um, another way we can present this data is I can do perf C2C report and then dash dash STDIO and this will just help me get uh, you know it'll generate just a report that you know lays all this information out in these tables so it's just an alternate way of viewing all of that data that we saw earlier so that's going to go ahead and do it with this video that's just a brief introduction to using perf c2c as always you can check out any of the code from these videos at github.com coffee before arch feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions and as always i'm nick and i hope you have a nice day